Pete Doherty covers the Green Bay Packers and is kind enough to join me for a couple of minutes to talk about training camp. Hey, Pete, how are you? Pretty good. How are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks. So I imagine one of the big storylines there is Jordan Love, his fourth season with Green Bay, but now stepping into a starting role. How has he looked to you? Yeah, Carolyn, you know, it's uh, so this was the today was the sixth full speed practice they've had. You know, overall, I mean, he's, um, you know, some days have been better than others, but overall, I'd say, you know, he's been pretty decent. Um, he hasn't thrown, you know, one of the things I think a lot of us were wondering is whether he'd be an interception machine. And I think he's only in team periods. I think he's only throwing one. He's had the defenses dropped one or two others. But, you know, it's not like Aaron Rodgers never threw interceptions in, in training camp. He always had a, had a few, too. So um, I, love's been good that way. He's had his share of, you know, really good throws. He's had some bad throws and bad decisions, no question. But overall, I'd say, you know, pretty decent. If I'm the Packers, I'm feeling at least okay about things right now. What has he said to you and the other media members who cover the team closely about how ready he is for this new chapter? Uh, he says he's very ready and really, you know, uh, three years of sitting. Um, I don't think you can be any more ready. Than, than sitting three full seasons and then uh, getting your shots. So it's not like he's a rookie coming in and starting. Uh, you know, he should be a lot better than a rookie would be, uh, even a really high pick, you know, even a, the first pick of the draft, for instance. But, uh, you know, he's about as prepared as he can be. And he's, in the previous off seasons, he's been the guy because Rodgers uh, skipped a lot of the off season stuff. So, you know, that was sort of a, uh, you know, a practice of being the guy for him. And, and he seems, you know, he seems – Fairly com pretty comfortable in the role, from what I can tell, just outside looking in right now. Aaron Rodgers is uh, busy making headlines with his new team, the Jets. Uh, watch out Sean Payton and Nathaniel Hackett. I think even if you love to hate Aaron Rodgers, you couldn't help but be entertained by the direct way in which he responded uh, to this latest sort of chapter, um, getting everybody here in New York all riled up. I know Jets fans are excited to have him. I, I mean, for you covering the team in Green Bay, how big of the void is there not having him around? Is it different? Is it strange at all? It's a lot different. Um, it's a little bit strange. You kind of had the off season to get used to it a little bit. Now we're two weeks in the camp. You know how fast things happen in this league. I mean, a week is like, you know, six months, you know, in regular life. So, um, so it's, it's gotten the new normal is hit, uh, but it is different. Rogers was such a, um, just an overwhelming presence, you know, be, not not just because of his play, but his, um, you know, media presence and, uh, you know, the, he was he had become uh, very willing to speak his mind as his career went on. So those last few years, it was always an interesting press conference with him and him doing the McAfee show and all those things. So it's a little lower key uh, vibe and, and love is uh, less of an extrovert than um, than Rogers was. So the, the vibe is definitely different, I think. You get the sense of a renewal also. You know, this is a fresh start for, you know, the whole organization. Now, two months into the season, if things are going really poorly, it, uh, they, you know, it won't feel like a fresh start. But I think right now with, you know, no games having been played and um, them feeling okay about where things are and teammates rallying behind this guy, um, it just feels, uh, it feels a little lighter. Uh, just the atmosphere in the locker room feels a little lighter. Is there a difference, is there nuance between a renewal and a rebuild? Yeah, um, you know, and it's funny, you know, you can, you can define these words how you want. Um, let's face it, it is a rebuild, but um, rebuilds can happen ridiculously fast in this league. I mean, they do have some talent on this team. They've got a bunch of first round picks on defense where if that ever comes together, they, they could be decent. And they've got a lot of young, at least talented looking players, first and you know, rookies and second year guys at the skill position. So there's talent here. Uh, so it's not like love has to be a great, has to just carry this team for them to, you know, to have a shot at a division. That's, you know, not a very good division where eight and nine or nine and eight might win the thing. Um, so, there, you know, there probably is, there's, there's nuance there, but it can be both. It, it can be a feeling of renewal and, you know, the, uh, this unknown future, you know, whereas with Rodgers, that quarterback, you knew they were going to win 10 games. You knew they were going to be in the playoffs. Um, so that, that changes. 
Um, but the vibe, the vibe is, is different. And like I said, you know, 10 weeks in the season, who knows what it'll be like around here. Yeah, definitely. Do you get the sense that the way that the team is currently constructed, that there's a feeling early on that they could be a playoff team? Or is that is that too much to ask without seeing how Love does in the regular season? Yeah, I'm sure that's their, their mindset, what they're saying. I mean, you know, we don't have to see it like they do, so I'm a little skeptical. But, you know, like I said, this division isn't that great. And if Love is just solid and doesn't turn the ball over – they might have enough talent where, you know, maybe they go eight and nine or nine and eight or maybe even ten wins, and, and that could win the division. I mean, I'm still if, if you're betting, just he's gonna make some mistakes that'll cost him games. It's inevitable. Rodgers went uh, six and ten his first year as a starter, his fourth year in the league, just like Loves, and look what he became. And they even extended Rodgers' contract halfway through the season, so they they decided he'd be their guy, but they still only went six and ten. So I don't know. I'm just I'm still predicting seven and ten, but. You know who knows who knows what will happen when they when they start playing the games. Yeah, the strength of the of the division matters in this league, especially when you look at how stacked some of them are. When you look at Jordan Love's game, um, is it the decision making that's the biggest question mark? You mentioned the interceptions in training camp. Is it something else that he explicitly needs to improve on uh, to get himself in a better position to do well in the regular season? Yeah, the decision making is huge, and I, you know, I've just learned this from all this. You know, I've been doing this 31 years now, and the, the coaches who come through. Basically, with the hard, what makes playing quarterback hard is you've got to play really fast. Now, Tom Brady had slow feet, but he played really fast. His decision making, his reflexes, getting the ball out, and you just don't know if a guy has that until he's playing in games with pass rushers who are trying to put him on the ground and defenses that are game planning for him. And so that'll be the real test. It's going to take probably half the season to get a, a real feel for, for love. But that's the question is, can he play fast enough to not make, to not be rushed into bad decisions? And, uh, you know, only, only the gameplay will show it. The guy's got a lot of arm talent. Uh, he doesn't have the howitzer like Favre. Or he, I know his arm's not as strong as Rodgers, I don't think. Um, but he can throw from all the different angles. He's a really good touch thrower. So it's just a matter of, it's like the question with all these guys, can they play fast? And we saw, you know, he's had limited exposure, but, you know, we did see him take the field previously, if not just for a short period of time. I mean, is that, that I am guessing, is not a large enough body of work. This sort of um, rhythm that you're talking about in terms of playing up to speed, decision-making, taking over the team, having it be your starting job. I mean, I would imagine you would actually need three to four full regular season games before people are going to know whether or not he's able to stretch and develop in that way. Yeah, yeah, I would think at least that, you know, it is such a small sample. But two years ago, so he played against, he started against Kansas City because Rodgers missed that game with COVID. And it was a struggle at the game. They don't think, I don't think LaFleur helped him much with the game plan. Uh, in that game, then at the last game of the season, he played. The Packers had their playoff spot, the top seed wrapped up. He played the second half of that game against Detroit, got the ball back twice in the last four minutes with a chance to tie or win the game, and uh, he didn't do it. So he didn't play well in that game either. But then last year, Rodgers got hurt just before the start of the fourth quarter against the Eagles, and Love came in and did pretty well. He put up 10 points in two possessions and kept the pack. You know, they were almost out of the game, but he kept them in the game. I think that gave the, the Packers a little confidence that, you know, let them know that he's a lot more ready than he had been the year before. So, you know, if last year was more of who he is, then he really does have a chance. Um, but, yeah, it'll take, you know, four to seven or eight games, I would think. Um, he's not a rookie, so I think I think half a season probably will give a pretty good indication of whether this guy is good enough. It doesn't. They don't have to be winning these games necessarily, but is he playing good football? Is he getting better? And maybe one of the advantages with having young talent come in or being in a, a quote unquote rebuild is that you don't have some of these grizzly veterans who were partial to an Aaron Rodgers who maybe wouldn't want to accept a quarterback finally stepping into his own as not necessarily a rookie, but a first time starting quarterback. Do you get the sense that he has the support of the locker room? Yeah, you, you definitely get a, a strong sense of that. And, you know, with Rodgers, they never worked together. Like, he never brought guys out to California to work out in the offseason, and, and Love did that uh, this summer. So I think that helps 
uh, with those relationships too. Um, so yeah, I think he's. I think the locker room definitely has rallied around him. I think guys, you know, a couple of guys that I've talked to in the off season, they liked what they saw in practice as the season went on last year. They felt like he improved a lot. And he got a lot of practice snaps because Rodgers had that broken thumb and missed uh, missed a fair share of practice for about uh, six weeks in there. So, you know, these guys have seen him in practice a lot, and at least for now, they have. I think they have definitely rallied behind him. Yeah, that's great insight. Um, on the injury front, I know the team had a, a couple of injury concerns on the defensive line. You mentioned the defense. Is there are, is there any injury update into into where they are right now in training camp? Is everybody pretty much healthy overall? They've had a really healthy camp overall. Just a couple of guys missing practice. Usually that list is is longer by now. Um, the one, the big thing is Rashawn Gary. As as you mentioned, uh, uh, he's their best outside rusher by far. He's probably crept into the top 10 outside rushers in this league. He tore his ACL last, I think it was it's either late October or early November, and he's still on PUP, so I'm not sure when he'll be back. He hasn't practiced yet. He's, uh, you know, he's just working out on the side. I think their hope is he starts practicing before camp starts, and then you know, it would be a slow ramp up, so he could start practicing in late August, and it still might be another month before he plays in a game. And it'd probably be, you know, two or three months before he's playing, you know, his normal amount of snaps. But that's the big one to watch because uh, he's there. He and Alexander are their two best guys and two most important guys on defense. So if you could just tell us a little bit about how uh, Christian Watson looks, a second year receiver. How, has he impressed so far? Yeah, he, um, you know, he missed, so, he missed most of camp last year and he was hurt a lot for the first half of the season. And once he started playing, they got noticeably better. I mean, it tells you the difference one guy can make on a team. Um, and this year, just watching him in the offseason, watching him in camp, he's, his legs are a little thicker. I think he's a little stronger. And he just looks a lot more confident catching the ball. He just looks so much more sure of himself. So um, if they become a good team, he'll be a big part of it. He's a pretty talented guy and a, a good deep threat. Um, so he's a, he's a very important player for him. Is there a, is there any particular position on the roster as you look at training camp? You said everybody's mostly healthy. That that is of particular concern. Yeah, the big one just for a starting job is at at safety where um, and Adrian Amos they let him go in the off season, so they have Darnell Savage who was a first round pick several years ago, but he's been really up and down. And then they got an open spot for uh, Rudy Ford is probably going to be the, the starter there. Um, but both, you know, the, I think they're pretty shaky there, at least going into the season. Now, maybe those guys will play well. Jonathan Owens is competing with Ford for that other starting job. It's a, it's an open spot. Um, but if you're the Packers, if you're a Packers fan that's and you want something to be concerned about, that's a, that's a pretty good place to start. Um, and they need their defensive line. Like I said, talk about Wyatt earlier. They need him to be a good player, um, you know, because I, I, that's where defense starts. And if you look around, if, if a team has a really good defense, chances are they're they're really strong on the defensive line. And have you seen any positional battles in training camp to note in particular that have been really kind of entertaining? Well, there's uh, the right tackle positions wide open, um, and so you know Zach Tom and uh, Yash Nyman are competing for that job. And Tom basically can play all five positions, and they, they're starting to look at him at center. So Tom is competing with Josh Myers at center and Nyman at right tackle um, for, you know, throughout camp. So we don't know which five are going to be the starters and if Tom will make it in at one of those two spots or not. I really appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Best of luck to you. Sounds like uh, we might have a bit of a middle-of-the-road season here, a little bit of a rebuild, but with the divisions being what they are, potentially a playoff team. Does that sound pretty accurate, at least at this point? Yeah, yeah. There's no really, there's no good team in this division, at least as of right now. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if any of the four teams won the thing. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Yep. Yep. Thanks for having me, Carolyn.